The next section for TA Southbounders is Hammer Springs to Arthur Pass. And I kept this, these pieces of film in here because it shows you the road that you have to end up hitching if you go into the town of Hammer Springs on the way out. It is a two-part hitch, as I did mention in the previous video. If you want to avoid that, you can stay at the Boyle Outdoor Center. Also, please reference the prior video. I'm not going to re-go over that information. But once you get back, that's the road that you hitch on. I'm pointing at right there. You start a little bit of single track trail and it's only about anywhere from half a mile to a mile. There is a DOC sign that kind of gives you a little bit of information when you start. So we're back on the road and I'm pointing here. That's where the quote unquote official trail goes, but a high percentage of TA hikers take the alternate, which is the road. And it is an official alternate and many people take it because the official trail goes into the riverbed that you see to the right right there and varying degrees of flood can change that riverbed and make it impassable in many conditions. So many people take the alternate. I kept this piece of film in here because the alternate takes a very sharp right off the road and there's no signage, nothing like that. You end up having to crawl underneath a barbed wire fence to ultimately get there. So just stay very aware about that. And once you get off the road, you start more of like actual single track walking. You cross a bridge over said river and this bridge will put you onto the other side where the trail gets a little weird for about half a mile to a mile. Um, it is marked, but there are a lot of animal paths and use paths through there. So just stay aware and stay checking uh, your map systems. So you cross through a gate and you're connecting back into the quote unquote official route of the TA. And there was no really signpost that you connected back into it. All of a sudden you're just back into it. And the track quality this day is actually really excellent. And I say actually, but like it's a surprise, but compared to what you've been going through, it's a standard of track that you can really hold a pace on, have that forward momentum, really not a whole lot of elevational changes. There are still those micro ups and downs, which I've talked about in prior videos. After all, it is still New Zealand, but you're in that forested portion. And then you start like junctioning it into another parcel of like valley uh, portion and the valley will ultimately bring you down into it itself. You kind of start on that ridge up there and then slowly descend down into it. And when you get down into it, you have a lot of huts in this section. So the first hut is this one. It is Half Hope Hut, I believe, or Hope Halfway Hut, I apologize. It's an older hut. You can stay there if you so desire. There's a lot of camping options outside. Um, it really just comes down to preference. If you decide to push past, you have more of this kind of valley walking and it's just very straightforward, kind of down in the riverbed and being able to access that water. And as you continue along, you just kind of stay in that riverbed for a little bit, kind of fluctuating between tree trail uh, or forested trail and this kind of river plain or valley plain type of trail. It is pretty easy walking overall, so you can hold a pretty standard pace along this portion. Again, as I said, the track quality of this day when you leave Boyle Outdoor Center or Hammer Springs Overall, it's just kind of fantastic. Um, one of the more consistently long portions of trail that you can like really, really hold a pace on. So just large, large valley sweeping views as you see here. It's just epically gorgeous. I didn't get a full on shot of that hut, but that is the first hut you pass. And it is anywhere from a 10 to 15 bunker, I believe. Um, it was jam packed when we passed. So I wanted to be polite to the folks that were inside. So I didn't film it, but do your research there if you plan on staying at that hut. And if you decide to go past that, the camping options get more limited. Even though it's all flat around here, camping really doesn't pick up again for another two to three miles. As I point out here, we tried our best. That was a little sloped and our guy lines would go into the trail itself as I'm pointing out. So we ended up having to do a little kind of a crooked camp spot. So if you are planning on going past that first hut, just make sure that you're aware that camping is a little farther than you would prefer. So if you decide to camp there and decide the second day you start with a kind of short but uh, sweet ascent and there is actually camping right in this forested section so if you do want a better camp spot the pr day prior maybe push on just a little bit more this is kind of the top of that first but sweet uh, short ascent and it kind of drops you down ultimately to the next river valley through this beautiful forested section again track quality overall through here is pretty pretty good um i was a big fan of it you do cross a few bridges you're used to that at this point. The bridges are pretty straightforward. Some even actually have boards on them, which is a nice little change, nice little flavor there. So I kept these scenes long just to show you the quality of track and I was super stoked about it. This is where you also have an option. So I'm pointing to right there where the official track is, but many people decide to just walk the river valley, um, kind of do a cross country style because that portion of track, the two or three miles inside of that tree line 
is really, really jam-packed with blowdowns um, from varying reports. So again, it's your option. I kept these scenes long because I've talked about bulls on the North Island. I've talked about um, just getting into that type of information. Bulls are more quote-unquote aggressive in general. So just give them their space, give them the respect they deserve, and kind of just let them do their thing. So we're still on the cross-country portion here. The miles are very similar. So if you are trying to decide to do the official trail or the cross country, it comes down to personal preference and opinion. You do have to cross a river more times on the cross country. I thought it was epically gorgeous as you see those mountains in the background compared to being in the tree line. So I would personally do it again. If I did it again, I would do the same route here, but it is your opinion. So when you get back to the official trail, it kind of signifies it with this kind of electric fence as well as Ultimately, there is a swinging bridge that you cross. I pointed out the river there because you could ford it if you so desired. If not, there's a nice bridge that you cross over and get into the track on the other side. So when you get to the track on the other side, the trail condition starts changing. Um, it still does have pockets of extremely well taken care of and kind of manicured trail, but it does start getting chunkier. You hit a hut about a mile from that bridge. And again, bigger hut, bigger style. So if you decide to stay there, there are a lot of options for camping as well as bunks. I think it's anywhere in that 10 to 15 range again. If you decide to go past that hut, the track quality does vary, as I said. Um, ultimately, you're just following that riverbed. You do have those micro ups and downs. It's the true flavor of New Zealand. The riverbed's really nice though. One, if you just want a lunch break. Two, you always have water closely accessible. Highly recommend filtering waters. Um, uh, filtering river water, cannot stress that enough. Personal preference though, and also in case you need to wash gear. Especially in New Zealand, your gear will get used quite a lot and it will have a lot of wear and tear, a lot of dirt, and it's a nice, beautiful spot to wash some gear and just kind of take a break. So if you decide to go past this point, there are camping areas throughout here. You will ultimately start walking more towards more shelters. And this area is just jam packed with shelters and you have just these smaller ones, these bigger ones, it's kind of, just read the information, Google the information, and decide which one you want to stay at. Some of them are better than others, but again, it's personal preference. You do pass by a natural hot spring. We didn't film it because we didn't go up to it. It is like 50 feet off trail. Um, we know that a lot of hikers do utilize that, but it's a really nice natural hot spring. So if you want to do that, it's right up off trail where I filmed that sign prior. This is just showing the quality of the track. Again, it just fluctuates constantly. Sometimes you're moving at that three mile per hour clip. Sometimes you're getting cut back down to that two mile per hour clip but there's no one mile per hour track in this section um at least in this day there will be some upcoming in your future so as you saw that was another hut another bigger one um and then it puts you right by another hut so the huts are just very prevalent in this section i don't know why um if somebody does that would be awesome but i personally do not know why I just like this piece of film right here. There's nothing important about it. Just another hut that you can stay at. You kind of have to squeeze through that door. And then it puts you more into this river track that you've been doing a long time. And ultimately from that hut, you will start your ascent um, up to a pass. And this ascent, it's nothing like, it's called a pass, but it's nothing like the passes in the Richmond Ranges or the passes prior. It's pretty gradually up. Um, there's nothing really really kind of that's a roadblock or an obstacle that will like heavily impact your pace there are steeper sections as you see magpies kind of having to use three points of contact but overall it's a pretty cruisy climb um you can really hold a pace on it i'm just pointing out as as normal there are some landslides in that area this will start signifying you're getting close to the top there is a hut directly be before the top it only has two bunks it's a very small one i think it's called a bivy hut and so i wouldn't rely on that if you get there and it's open that's awesome but it's only a two bunk hut so i would not rely on that right after that hut the trail kind of disappears so really check your maps they want you on the left side of the creek but the actual beaten down single track is on the right side so just be aware about that this is the official pass harper's pass again like i said the climb up to there was not too bad pretty nice single track graded pretty well overall the descent however down the back side of harper pass get prepared it is quite something um, there's washout, there's slippery portions, and it's just really overgrown as you see here. There are deep mud pockets that you would prefer aren't as deep as they actually are, so your pace will take a heavy hit. And also for people that love camping on top of passes, there is absolutely no camping on top of Harper Pass. We scoped it out, we were done for the day, absolutely no camping, so do not rely on that. And the force around it, even on the descent, there is no camping, so you're going to have to push on. So if you get 
to that hut before the pass and late, I would not recommend pushing past it unless you want to do some night hiking. So that was more of the descent. I showed you a scene about these like waxy leaves that uh, create part of the slippage. And this is just more of the steepness. Again, it's hard for the camera angle to capture how steep it actually is. It's very, very slow going. There's no portion that you can really start picking up your pace through here. It's just slow overall. So as you start dropping down and it starts getting more leveled out, this bridge will signify kind of the first spot that you actually can camp. I'm pointing to it here. I ended up crossing the bridge just to check if there was more camping available. Not really. The camping in this section until the next hut is very, very, very limited. So again, check your maps, check your pace, kind of do what makes you comfortable. We, I'm showing you here that we camped on the other side. It fits about one tent. There may be an option on the other side for like one more, but don't rely on it. Again, I cannot stress that enough, especially with how steep that section down into here was. It would be quite difficult to navigate that during nighttime. So if you do camp there the next day, you cross the bridge and you're pretty close to the next hut. The next hut was like a mile or two forward but you see with the track conditions it's still slow going so we didn't feel comfortable pushing to it the night prior but it is slow going you have this river track a lot of washout again i wish the camera could do justice to how steep that stuff is very steep and very unstable so just take your time pick and choose your route you're going through those orange markers and those orange posts ultimately and they kind of guide your way you will kind of bounce in and out of these little creeks kind of tributaries to the ultimate river itself and eventually you will arrive at this hut coming up here, the Lock Stream Hut. Bigger hut can fit anywhere from 10 upwards of folks, um, even more if people are sleeping on the floor. We didn't go inside, but it does look like a good hut and I know a lot of hikers that stay there. So when you leave that hut, the river portion again, um, it's just slow. You're going back and forth across these streams and there's some erosion that you have to deal with ultimately. So your pace will fluctuate through here. Sometimes this type of stuff, you can hold a pretty standard pace but ultimately you're gonna be averaging a little lower than you would prefer. And this valley kind of is the flavor of a lot of the rest of your day. You will have more forested portions, but ultimately you're just kind of crossing through this large, large, beautiful valley. So kind of take a moment, do a 360. It's just surrounded by beautiful mountains. I kept these slow-mo videos in here because I just thought the scenery was epically gorgeous. So you do have more hut options along this way. And I think the first major hut that you pass is called Kiwi Hut. It's in a few scenes here, but ultimately you're just following that riverbed. As long as you keep the river somewhere close to you, you're going in the right direction. You can see there's orange markers that point the way. So the maps, you kind of just follow the river and go back and forth in between it over and over again. <laughs> again, it's not quote unquote hard walking. There's not a lot of technical stuff. It's just slow. If so you don't want to twist an ankle. You can always filter the river. We found a nice little stream as you saw there and a lot of flat camping areas through here. Camping kind of becomes limitless. So you do have the option of Kiwi Hut. It is about, I think 50 meters off trail. We did not personally go there, but we heard reports that it is a nice hut to stay at. So a few miles link up, check that out. If you go past Kiwi Hut, it's more of the river track, more of that rock. You do have one very deep crossing. So I think if it is flooding, this would be your most biggest pinch point. So just be aware there is one very deep crossing. For us, it was about waist high. Um, I could see it getting higher. So if you go past that, you have this brush where the official track is, and it's about a half a mile until it puts you back into this riverbed. It's very overgrown. So you're gonna be getting poked and prodded by those branches where you wouldn't prefer. Back into the forest you go. That's kind of just the flavor of New Zealand overall. It just puts you back forth, back forth, back forth. Not a whole lot of elevation through here besides those micro ups as you see with Magpie. Um, just kind of, you just got to drop down into a valley, pop back up. Not a whole lot of elevation, just slower because of the terrain itself. And water's always accessible. And I've pointed that out in prior videos. And I want to point that out in this video as well, the water sources. The water just starts becoming very abundant on the South Island always still be aware of where your water sources are, but we never carry too much water for 99% of the South Island just due to you're always in these riverbeds. And if not, you're climbing up to a hut that does have a water tank. So own personal preference there, but I wanted to point that out. So as you get to the end of that river, quote unquote, sprawl, you start to have two options. So here's an informational board. Again, it fluctuates depending on the year. Our year, you had two options to go down the first track or the second track. The official route went off to the left. We took this alternate through this floodplain because ultimately 
it seemed with the information we had to be the better route. As you can see, there's still those orange markers. It's really your uh, preference at this point. They're about the same miles. This one will connect you into a road sooner. And this road walk is about two miles until it connects you back in a track. If you are in an emergency and need to get to Arthur Pass, this road will lead you into it. So if you're running out of food, you can take that quicker option to get you into town quicker. We did not need to go into town, so we popped back in the trail and started this section. I kept these scenes long because be very aware about this. This section has high flood risk. Very high flood risk due to your gist in a river consistently. And unlike that floodplain you were in yesterday and also earlier this day, it is not a wide floodplain. It is a very narrow channel that can get flooded quite a lot. So very much be aware with your weather. Check your weather conditions before going into this. I would not want to do this section if it had been raining for days prior, if it was pouring down rain when I was going in there. It could get really slow going and potentially sketchy. So as you see, this is Deception River and your miles up to ultimately Goat Hut or Goat Pass, very slow. You're just going across this rock through the river multiple times. Um, there's really never any quote unquote defined single track. As you see in this scene, there's a track that like is more used but ultimately you're shooting from orange post to orange post and just picking your easiest route or best route through this river bed. Um, again, we crossed the river probably 9, 10, 11 times. Probably some of those weren't needed. It's just you're trying to pick your best time. There's this one portion, I kept this in here because that was like 500 feet and then it went back to river bed. We thought we had broken through the river, but don't get fooled by that one portion. <laughs> it goes straight back to river. So just a lot of rock. The ascent overall, you're gradually climbing, but you really don't feel it because of just kind of how much you're doing with the rock beds through there. So you're overall ascending, but it's not too bad. Every so often you have to push up off a rock like you see Magpie doing there, but the ascent itself is pretty, pretty okay, at least in my opinion. So you'll get to here, Deception Pass Hut, and it's about a mile and a half before Goat Hut Pass, where 90% of hikers like to stay because it's very scenic. It's like a go-to hut in this section. We stayed here, one, because it was pouring down rain, and also we kind of had like our private mansion in the woods here, which was really nice. More people go to the Goat Put Hut Pass because, um, again, it's more of a scenic hut, and it's just kind of at the top of the climb. But from this hut to the Goat Hut Pass, even though it's only that mile or some change in there, distance, it will take you over an hour. Um, it is very slow. And I've said that a lot in this video, and I've said that a lot in prior videos. I'll probably say that a lot in future videos. You cross the river again multiple times. There's not really much deep pockets as it was when you were fully down in that riverbed. It's more of these smaller channels that feed into that bigger bed. And when you're not in the river, you're in stuff like this. Up, down, up, down, up, down. Um, just through rock um, and root and just very slow. Kind of three points, four points of contact. As you see, it's very scenic. <laughs> it's just very slow. So... You continue climbing and eventually about the ha the last half mile before Goat Hut Pass, um, the trail starts changing. You get out of more of this water and rock and you get more into just kind of rock scrambling itself after this waterfall, of course. This was by far one of my favorite pictures, videos, just anything of New Zealand. It's just so gorgeous through there. Um, just everything about that. I kept that slow because I loved it. So I'm pointing towards where Goat Hut Pass is. Um, and as you can see, the climb starts changing a little bit through here. I kept this scene long to show you those orange posts. They are your best friend on the South Island. And this is when you start junctioning out of that full river and just more into like a drier creek bed. There's still water in it, but ultimately it is a drier creek bed. It's not that river bed that you were going through earlier. This is Goat Hut Pass, uh, shelter or hut. And yeah, there's that water tank there. Everything's right there. And a lot of people stay there because it's just absolutely gorgeous up there um, on a clear day you can just see beautiful mountains you see mist come off the mountains as you see here um, just epically gorgeous so if you do want a very scenic one there is also service there for people that need to know um, cell phone service in case you want to check the weather forecast and what have you so if you could decide to go past there you hit this boardwalk section for about a mile two miles and it's really nice it's a boardwalk you can hold a pace it's kind of on this tabletop so you really don't have to worry about a whole lot of elevational gain and change uh, ascent and descent. And eventually this boardwalk will come to an end, um, unfortunately. And once it comes to an end, you do start, start a more steep descent into the next river valley. And the steep descent is pretty standard. It's not too bad. There's not a whole lot of washout. 
um, but once you get into the river valley that will change. So this is the first time you cross the river and it's the major pinch point. Again, flood conditions can change this. When we crossed it, it was right below knee high, um, but again, flood conditions can really change the environment in pretty much all of New Zealand, um, especially this year. So there was a hut at the base of it. Again, two-person hut. Those things are very cute. We love those, but it depends if you want to stay there. This is where the track starts to change a little bit. It's more of those micro ups and downs I've talked about that will slow your pace for about two or three miles this is going on for. It's just straight down, and then as you'll see, it just is going to end up going straight back up on the other side. That's why I kept these two scenes in here. I thought it was a cool contrast of down up. That's that's the flavor for those next two or three miles. Once you hit this viewpoint, you can really start timing out your pace. You can really start like expecting to do three miles in an hour or whatever your pace may be because the track does get easier and you just still have a few river crosses but like it's actually single track as you see here and the rocks underneath your feet aren't just like giant boulders so you can actually cruise pretty well on that just gorgeous views all the way around beautiful section throughout there and ultimately this track will leave you lead you excuse me into a road and we're on the road right now it's a two track to begin with and then it'll put you into pavement the official trail again goes through the river valley to magpie's left here longer but more people decide to take the road because the river valley is not tracked at least the information we had 2022 23 it wasn't signed um so more people decided to take the road than less again north island south island of the te Aurora trail filled with alternates pick and choose your battles here folks you're always going to be dealing with water always going to be dealing with climbs ascents um it's just comes down to personal preference so a lot of hikers also decide to send a resupply box to the Beely hotel which i show you here many people decide to do that because if you wanted to go into arthur pass it is a hitch off trail and it is a touristy town um, that will have higher prices for amenities lodging services restaurants but the Beely Hotel is really nice. Um, they do let you sit inside, get a cold drink. If you want food from them, I believe you have to schedule in advance. Please double check me on that. Their policies may have changed, um, but they will hold your resupply box. So that was really nice that they would do that since you do ultimately have to hitch off to get to the town proper. So once you leave the Beely Motel, you'll have two, two miles or somewhere in that ballpark of roadwalk. They'll connect you into the next piece of track. And this next piece of track is a long ascent. There is a hut here about half a mile behind this sign. I did not film it. I know some hikers do decide to stay at that. So if you want to get close to the climb, but right at the base, you can stay at that hut. If you decide to do the climb, it's actually, even though this scene right here makes it look chunky, it's actually a pretty good climb. Um, we held a pretty standard pace on it and we were at the top before we knew it and got rewarded greatly up at the top here. I would point out there's a lot of water sources, quote unquote, at the top here, fill up before you get to the official top if you want to camp up there because there is one creek that is like the feeder creek and a lot of the other ones that were quote unquote listed were dry so it would have been epically gorgeous to camp at that top there so fill up before you actually think you get to the top or when you get to that last water source there so if you get to the top and drop down the backside, there is an awesome shelter down here again it's one of those two person huts and it's just um epically gorgeous there's a dual one or like a sister or brother one in the woods behind it this one when we got there there was nobody there it's that smaller a-frame type shelter um the water source if you do need it down here is a creek behind the hut and it's just a great hut system we absolutely love those huts so that's it get ready for the next section